Welcome to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart podcast. I'm so excited for season two and the great guests you're going to hear from, their struggles, how they overcame their struggles, their triumphs. Through personal and business life, I think they're tied together and we're going to share great stories about that. This show isn't just about me. It takes a lot of good people working with me. Among them is my partner, 8-7 Network and Clay Hicks. Building relationships, building community is the mission of H7 Network. They want to create a network of champions where everybody wins. Find out more at h7network.com. And we hope to motivate you, inspire you, and educate you through our show. Enjoy the show. We'll talk to you on the other side. Welcome, everyone. This is your host, Steve Ramona, with Doing Business with a Servant's Heart. And I've got one successful person here. She is helping people get to levels they cannot believe they get to. Coaches are doing that. She's doing it all the time. Jean, welcome to the call. Or show, actually. Hey, Jean, yeah, thanks, Steve. Nice to see you here. You too. Thanks for coming. Let's start in the beginning. Why did you start working this, uh, doing this? Well, working with coaches or being yeah. a coach altogether? Both, actually. Okay, so I got into coaching 12 years ago. And honestly, it wasn't really like a choice. It was really a small choice because it was really all I could do that I wanted to do. Because I, I was a solo parent at that point. Mm. And I wanted to be with my kids at home. And I thought, well, I'm not going to go get a J-O-B. What can I do? And I thought, okay, I could be a coach. So I got certified at night and I started as a life and business coach and then eight years offline. And I was really good at the networking stuff. But then I discovered the beauty of being online and social media marketing four years ago. And that was when my business really exploded. And I realized that coaches really need help building their businesses. Yeah, and that's powerful because there's a lot of coaches out there and there's a lot of competition, right? Right. And that, there is, but I, I don't believe in the, the concept of competition, really. Yeah. I mean, I think that when you focus on something as being real, then you get sucked into that. I never thought that way. I just did the work because I had to. And then people would say to me, oh, there's so much competition. And I'd be like, is there? Because I, I don't really notice it. Of course, it's there, but I don't focus on that. I like that because you're right. It, it was the wrong word. The collaborations... Coaches need to collaborate, partner up. So let's go through the journey of a coach comes, becomes a client of yours, kind of walk through a little bit, you know, and give all the secret sauce, but what you do with them so somebody is listening and can learn how you work with them. Sure. So, I mean, really, it's really not, not hard. Um, it's, there's certain things we need to be clear about before you can sell anything. So, you know, I give this example, if you go into Walmart or any other store and you go to the shelf and there's like a box with a question mark on it. You're not going to grab it and go to the cashier and buy it. Right. So the same with coaching. If, if you don't, if people don't know what you're selling, they're not going to pay you for it. So a lot of coaches are not clear on what their actual offer is. So it's really important to get super clear about what the offer is, who you're serving. And from there you have complete clarity and there's no confusion for you or the person you're selling to. And that's kind of the springboard. And then from there, of course, if you're on social media, uh, you have to learn how to do content that actually, you know, engages people and makes them want to learn more about you. And I'm, ta I'm talking a lot lately about intriguing people. I think the key now that I've come to is it's not enough to provide value. It's not enough to engage. It's not enough to do all that stuff. I really think we're in a, a situation now online and in the world. I think people really want to feel intrigued. They want to feel intrigued by that person because when you're intrigued, you want to learn more. And, and I think in personal relationships, what's really compelling is being intrigued when you meet somebody, whether that's a person that's going to be you know, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a wife, a spouse, a friend, you're intrigued or somebody you're going to hire. So I think that that the content, uh, we, we help them with that. And then of course, there's the whole lead generation and how to sell. So that's kind of it in a whole nutshell. And um, and we, we take people through this and, and it works and we do that without ads. Sounds like you build, they're helping build relationships. Um, yes, I am. Because with marketing, if you're not building a relationship, then it's really just sort of spammy selling. However, 
there's this kind of idea that I don't know where it came from, that you have to wait a long time to build a relationship. But you know, there's such such a thing as love at first sight as well. So I think that we have to make room for all types of relationships in marketing. And I feel like there's some sort of shame or blame going on if you don't like know somebody forever before they sign up with you. Now, personally, I will know when I need something. And if I meet a coach or a service provider and I'm sure of them, I will just say, hey, I'm hiring you. So there, there, there's no one way about it. And I think that there's this sort of dialogue going on at the moment that you have to like nurture people forever. Why? If somebody knows you and digs you and says, you're the one and I've watched all your content and I don't want you to hire me right now. That's a love at first sight relationship. So it's still relationships. Yep. No, it is. What's one thing that coaches when you're working with them that they do action wise that really helps them grow? Being consistent. Mm -hmm. So, so really any marketing, any marketing, whether it's offline, online, no matter what it is, no matter what type, whether it's ads, whether it's networking, being consistent and persistent. Those are the two things that no matter what, if you keep doing that consistency and persistence, you will get there. You just have to pick a lane and you have to know what your avenue is. And then you, you exercise those two habits or traits to whatever marketing avenue you're using and you will be successful. I like both those because you can't be consistent unless you're persistent. They have to work right. together. You know, I'm right. consistent, but I'm not doing anything. Exactly. You know, do you work individually? Do you work in groups or do you combination of both with coaches? I do. I have a hybrid that works really well because I figured out that people need more than a group. They really need some one-on-one. -on -one. And that, but they also, when they have one-on-one, -on -one, they really need the community. So I have a group hybrid that's group and one-on-one -on -one, uh, for the coaches. I also have a very high level um, offer for uh, high level VIPs and CEOs that's one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, that's great. Okay. Because I like the combination because every coach is different. You know that you work with coaches. Yeah. Everybody has to have a different path. And of course, financially, whatever makes sense for them. What's a big mistake that you've learned from coaches they do when they're marketing? So many. Okay. <laughs> we all make mistakes. There's yeah. so many I've made, no. you know. Yeah. I think I think it really is the not persistence. It's the throwing the mud at the walls. It's doing something once or twice and expecting it to work immediately. And then it doesn't. And then you don't really know if it's working or not because you don't have the data. You don't have the repetition, the reps, you don't have done the reps. And uh the way I put it is this, you know, anything in your life anything in your life that you've gotten good at. Now, many people are sports people. They've done the reps. They've practiced every single morning. They're getting up at four o'clock and plunging into an ice cold pool for years and years to be an Olympic swimmer or a champion swimmer. They're golfers. They're doing, they're doing those swings billions of times. Tennis, same thing. Anything, same thing. Nobody expects to play a sport and be good and do something twice. And then they're not good. And why didn't that work? Music, same thing. You know that you're going to have to practice every single day to be good at piano or violin or anything or singing. So there's something going on in the business world where anywhere and university, we didn't go to one class when we went to university, went to the mall. Okay, so there's some problem of perception that everything else in life takes work and repetition, but not business. And coaches will come in and do things or, or, or they're doing things on their own and not working with us, but they're, they're saying to me, even on a sales call, you know, I did this. I said, how many times? Well, you know, I did it twice. <laughs> I said, well, there, there's no data there. So maybe it'll work. So what they're doing is they're, you know what they're doing? They're giving up when they're five feet from the gold. You know, that, that yeah, story, I know that book, it's a great book. You know the story they're five feet, but they haven't done the reps and they're giving up where they're not giving up if they, if they are doing any of those endeavors in their life, like sports or music or anything that they've done over and over, they, their expectation was that they had to do it over and over. And I think somehow somebody is instilling an expectation with coaches and business people that there's just this magic wand and you do things once and it all falls on your head. Now, it's funny. You talk about sports and, and the reps, you just brought that memories of double days for football <laughs> in the meat of the summer and sweating. And it's crazy. I, and what came to my head as you're talking, I love what you're saying here, John, is the accountability part. Talk about that because I think that's important, isn't it? Well, it really is. I mean, you need accountability with yourself and you need accountability with others. 
Now, some people are really good at self-accountability. There are people that are really good at self-accountability. They exist. Everything exists. Okay. Most people aren't. Most people need a partner. Most people need somebody to, to brainstorm with. They need somebody to talk to. They need some. So most people need a coach of some sorts for something in their lives. I'm big on coaching, by the way. I have many coaches right now. And so the accountability, either you create your, your very organized, you know, beast-like accountability for yourself. Now I do some of that myself, but then I have a bunch of coaches as well. But if you're not accountable, it's hard to keep up. It's hard if you're not in an environment, it's hard to keep going on your own. So it takes all types, but you know, with the coaching, it, it, you the accountability is just a small part of it, but yet it's a big part. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. And that sounds like that's what's a big is a part of your coaching is is the accountability. Well, actually, it's kind of a small part. It's just an important part. Gotcha. No, I, right? I understand that. No, that's that's really good. What kind of coaches do, do you work with a full gamut of coaches or is there a niche that you work with? I work with all sorts of coaches and also consultants. Actually, a few service providers here like copywriters because the organic marketing that I'm doing, it's called organic marketing, which is social media unpaid marketing works for a lot of people. So yeah, basically all kinds of coaches. I love that you tap into social media because it's everywhere and a lot of right. people do it wrong. Well, that's just because they haven't been trained to do, you know, like you, you've got to be trained to do something properly. And, you know, you could do, you know, this is another thing you might know what to do, but you, you haven't met. If some people haven't mastered it, it's sort of like if I give you a basketball, okay, the yeah. same basketball and you go on a court with Michael Jordan and he's got the same basketball. He's on the same court as you, you're wearing the same you know, you know, shoes and everything. Well, the results with that basketball are going to be very different in Michael Jordan's hands than yours. And so, so a lot of people have strategies, but they just haven't mastered them yet. It's a fantastic analogy. I, I, so true. Cause I'm not going to be as good as Michael Jordan, no matter what, cause he's got all that years. Let's go back to practice mm -hmm. and reps. Right. I don't have right. those reps. Right. Well, this is June 2023. The only reason I say that is you need to go to LinkedIn because I get those messages. Hey, I just got one an hour ago. Hey, I'm a lead gen. Come join my lead gen. Let's jump on a five minute call and I'll show you how to triple your leads. Mm -hmm. That's not the way to do social media, is it? No, it's not. No, but they th those lead gen services run on attrition. So they get they they spam enough people. Some people are desperate for leads. They go, this seems like a magic bullet. They hire them. Usually they fail, but then they get another 20 clients. Ah, gotcha. Right. And they need you <laughs> to teach them the right way. Right. The coaches do. I'm, I'm not yeah. actually like a, a lead gen. Yeah, yeah, no. Person. Yeah. I'm a coach, right? But, but you know, we've had clients that have used those lead generation services and they're like, oh my gosh, they're just spamming everybody. And we'll go in and help them do it properly. And all of a sudden they're getting like good leads. They're actually communicating with and treating like human beings and not like a number. So you actually take some of the marketing they're doing already and enhance it. Coach Absolutely. We, we, oh, that's oh, fantastic. Yes. We, we will Talk coach people that. to, we will coach people to, to, you know, what they're doing, what we do an analysis, what's going on and okay, we're going to make this better um, and, and tweak it. And then sometimes we will introduce, depending on the client, we're always introducing new things, but sometimes they're, you know, they're almost there. And in some of the strategies and it just needs some tweaking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you put a lot of nuggets out there. So golden nuggets, not just nuggets. I know listeners will want to reach out to you. How can they get a hold of you? Well, you know, I'll give you my link. I, I have a, a jeanomlore.com forward slash reviews. Also, my name, I, I'm just on social media as my name. So it's really easy on Instagram, jeanomlore, Facebook, jeanomlore, LinkedIn, jeanomlore. And, um, I have a, a YouTube station that I sort of neglect a little bit called Jean Amlore TV, but um, yeah, definitely. I'm very open to people reaching out and they can just DM me or, you know, go to my website and, you know, take Get a look. Of you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I've listened to you a couple of times. We had a couple of meetings right before this show and about a week or so ago, I'm going to do something a little crazy. You, mm -hmm. you okay with that? Sure. So the first five listeners that reach out to Jean and mention the podcast in my name or either, or it doesn't matter. Okay. I'm going to send you a $25 Amazon gift card. Wow. Because what she does is level you up. I'm not going to say the numbers if she wants to say the numbers, but I've heard some crazy number, excuse me, not crazy, cool numbers that you can reach with her coaching. 
and it's going to be a game changer for you. I, she's amazing. So I'm putting my money where my mouth is. And the first five people, I will send that. I did it for another show last week. I sent out two gift cards. So I will do that wow. because I believe in what you do. And, and I'm pretty fired up. That's I'm amazing, share... but it has to be coaches, okay? Yeah, it has to be yeah. coaches. So right. after you coaches reach out to who she wants to talk to. Oh, okay, um, I love that. That's fun. That works? Thanks. Okay, great. That's a bonus so, for me. <laughs> yes, amen. So um, tell me, tell us a story. You've got, I know, tons of stories, but tell us a story of a coach you've helped and the end result. Well, um, I had a recent client who's been coaching for 16 years. Now, a lot of the co coaches that come in, they are new coaches. We will start people from scratch. However, I do get seasoned coaches and the seasoned coaches usually are stuck. They, they've gotten into bad habits. They, they, they don't know what they're doing and they're behind the times. So she came in very nice lady and she, um, we got, we got her, you know, she was re relying on referrals only. Now referrals are great, but when you rely on referrals, you're actually giving up your power to other people, hoping they're going to send you people. So you're giving your good away, right? You're relying on other people for your good, I call it. Mm -hmm. So I told her that. She goes, I know that. And she said it was going great and it all dried up all at once. So she's complete panic. Great coach, but complete panic. So I said, okay, we're going to fix this. So she came in and we helped her and she got her highest cash month ever in 16 years in the very first month of working with us, $43,000 cash. How'd she feel? She was just ecstatic. And she said to me, this is the best part. She said, I did that because on that sales call, I saw how much you believed in me. And I thought to myself, this woman has so much belief in me. How come I don't have that belief in myself? I'm going with this. And she said, all she had to do was catch up to my belief about her and she caught up and it happened. Of course, there's strategy, but a lot of that was mindset. And she said, I thought to myself, this woman clearly believes in me. So I'm going to go with that. And then I slowly got on board. And by the end of the month, she was like three weeks. She's like, she goes, I'm on board with you now. Now I believe in myself. So she was ecstatic and very grateful. Great story. Talk about mindset. Um, I, I know that's part of your coaching because it's yes. every coaching. Let's talk about because I am big a mindset person. So let's talk about that. Huge. Now you need mindset and strategy together because mm -hmm. you know you, you need the mindset, but you still need the way. You know you got to pray with your feet. We say right. You <laughs> you got it. You got to still. God helps those who help themselves. Right. All those cliches. I love them all. Okay. <laughs> it's yeah. not a cliche. I don't love. I'm pretty corny actually. <laughs> all right. So the mindset. Really, you know, I'm really getting to the point. I do a ton of mindset and I'm actually going to be launching an actual mindset, lower, lower program at some point, like for 3k or something, but I'm not there yet, but I love mindset so much. Really, it really is about your self-perception, you know, like, you know, the psycho cybernetics book, it's my like favorite, favorite personal development book and all of it. And, you know, Bob Proctor based his on that. And so did, um, you know, um, what's the other one? Um, uh, the rich one, you know, Tony Robbins. No, yeah. the other one before. Sorry, I'm totally zoning right now. But you know, um, oh gosh, I can't believe it. the one that Bob Proctor, you know, developed it on. But oh, it really yeah. is. It really is. Um, it really is about your self perception. So, so much of the work has to be on self love, self perception, and self belief. Belief you can do this because I can coach people, and we we actually help people sort of like get clients while they're beginning to believe we don't wait and say oh no we got to work on your mindset before we know we just get them going and as they see it's working the mindset catches up sometimes yeah. kind of like with that lady however um i'm really big on the creative visualization that we have our, our subconscious must be engaged to make real change in our lives so i'm really big on those creative visualizations slash meditations where you are imagining how you want things to be as if they have already happened and having deep gratitude for them before they've happened because you imagine them so well that you're just grateful that you're there. Now, this is the most powerful mindset I've come across. I do tons of different mindset, but it really is about the self-belief and projecting that picture by your creative picturing of it already happening, like as if it's happening. And how do you feel about that? And it gets you into another state 
Tony Robbins talks a lot about getting into another state. So yes, it's very important. However, we have helped people whose mindset really wasn't where it could have been, but they started getting clients anyway, because I just said, okay, that's fine. Let's just do the actions and taking the actions. And that's how I was. I had a terrible mindset when I came online. I thought, you know what? I'm just going to do the actions and just believe if I just do the actions and the reps. And then my mindset sort of started catching up. I love it. And habits are a big part of mindset too. Absolutely. I mean, mindset is just basically a layering of habits. Hmm. I'm glad you mentioned mindset because I knew you did. I want the listeners to hear that because it, it, it's such a, I mean, it's a game changer. And I love the fact, because I want to recap a little bit, that you get people making money with this managing their, you know, their marketing, mm -hmm. but building their personal as well as they're going. So by the end of five, six, seven, eight months, their mindset's changed. It's hundred percent better and they've made money. Exactly. So it is really is, and, and this is the journey. And the thing is, thank you, because nobody kind of gets that. The thing is, it is a holistic program because I'm so into the mindset. Really, you know what my real goal is? Yes, we help coaches make money. But my real goal is to have people have peace of mind and happiness and joy Amen. and doing what you love. And that's my mission, actually, is to help a million people do this. The mission is to have people do what they love, but have joy from it because they're earning money. They're, they're working, they're not, you know, doing it, but full of anxiety. It's like, I really help people. Anxiety is a killer. I help people a lot with anxiety strategies as well. So it, the fear, getting rid of the fear and anxiety, because you want them to earn money. I really want them to earn money and to thrive, but to also be happy and joyful and enjoy their lives and not be in full of pain and anxiety and lack because some people start making money and they can't get rid of that. Uh, you know, mindset of lack and all that. So yes, I actually have a, a, a mindset coach on my team who's a healer. So it is a whole holistic thing. So you got it, Steve. Most people don't get that. Well, that segues into my last question because we're running out of time here and I could talk to you for an hour and a half. Um, unfortunately, we'll, we'll have you back because I, I, I can feel a lot more coming from this. What does a servant's heart mean to you in business? A servant's heart, really, I actually am a servant leader. I did, I did, I did a executive leadership in that a servant's heart really is to want to help people get what they want get what they desire and i'm just the the conduit i'm just that person that says hey what do you want and, and literally i'll say on a sales call i won't even tell you about my program if i'm not 100 percent sure that i can help you get what you desire and they're like oh that's novel so it really <laughs> is really is you know, it's like Zig Ziglar, you know, you, you want to, you know, help millions of people get what they want, right? If you want to get what you want. And I believe that. I heard that later on in life. That was before my time. My brother used to listen to those in, in the, the set 80s and 80s. But the point is, it really is, what do they want? What do you desire? And really opening your heart to listening to what they want, even if I'm not the one. So even if I'm not the one, I want to listen and I'll say, you know what? We can help you, or I can't help you here, but I know somebody that can. And I'll send them to that person. Yeah, I'm going to end with this. You got me fired up. Do you know if you're a coach listening to this show or know a coach that's doing well and wants to do better and level up, reach out to John because I'm going to give gift cards. I'm just so fired <laughs> up to do it. I want to give out five gift cards this week. So it's June 23rd, June 27th, 2023. By July 4th, let's get out five uh, gift cards to people. And I, not only that, I'm going to be able to help you grow through her. I love awesome. what you're saying. Thank you so much for being on the show. You are a blessing. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Can I ask one more favor? Absolutely. What's a great tip you can leave my audience that's helped you through your journey through all this? One phrase. If not now, when? <laughs> 